everybody. Welcome to the experience. And we have a very special friend of the show, Carrie Walker. Hey, in the house. And Carrie's a friend of mine and a friend of the show. And she is the co-host of the Joyride Show, which <laughs> we all know and love. And if you haven't checked it out, you absolutely need to check it out because it's freaking awesome. And, and I just want to welcome you, Carrie. Welcome, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. It's so good to be here. It's so good to see your face. I know. It seems like forever. Well, you've been really busy. <sighs> so have you. We're just busy bees. Yeah, Someone's been renovating their house. <laughs> yeah, well, we're done. Finally, we are finally done. Oh my done. gosh, you got to you know take what? me on a tour. I would love to. I, and I, we redid the backyard. Our backyard looked like, I don't know, for those of you that are around my age will know this reference. Um, the, do you remember Sanford and Son? Yes. <laughs> my backyard <laughs> kind of, yeah, it looked like that. I, like I had the got junk folks come to get all the stuff out of my yard and I, I thought they were going to cry. They walked out and they were like, like, you want all this gone? So yes. Like over the years, I collect all these pots for the plants and then they die. And then I had a thing for chairs and I had chairs anyway. And so now it is, it is just beautiful back there. And, and, and it is, I don't know, for my birthday, my mom and dad bought me this and um, this pizza thing, and it makes a pizza and like it's like a pizza oven. Uh huh. Oh and my gosh! Cool. And so we've been making pizzas and swimming, and we're outside, and it's like heaven. You know, oh. I've got all the kids, and yeah, it's really fun. So it's paid off. I mean, it, it, this has been going on for over a year, and it's really stressful. We're very blessed, you know, during COVID to be able to finish this and do this, it, it is, you know, which I think everybody's doing something to their house or. Yeah. And I heard we, we've had our place checked out to see how much and they're like, yeah. And it's 30% more expensive to do that now during COVID. Cause there's like a, a super shortage of, of supply and all yeah. that jazz, but you also are in, are in Texas, which I am is open, you know, where I'm in North Carolina and it's still very, uh, not totally shut down, not like California, but Texas and Florida are the most open, I think. And then, you know, here it's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff. Like it's, it's a lot of sort of like fear and mad, gotta wear masks and all that stuff. So I can't wait till that opens because the kids have been stuck at home, you know? Oh, our kids have been in school, so they could go to school or stay home, depending. Right. And um, I did a lot of research on that, and they decided, and, and we decided that for their well-being, well -being, they needed yeah. to be at school, and 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 you know as much as they could, you know. And we do the masks, and we've had the we've had our vaccines, and that was uh, we've got to get to that because that was a really talk about two worlds coming together. Um, yeah, I, I which one did you get? That the Mod Moderna uh, mm -hmm. and yeah. and I wasn't sure if I was going to do it and I decided to the second one was a mind blower I mean it it's like I was giving birth out of my head it really oh my gosh really <laughs> yeah. that's no yeah. fun it was no fun but I have to tell you when I made that choice because I wasn't again I wasn't really sure how I felt about it and it seemed so fast and um you know, from the beginning to, oh, by the way, we're ready to put it in your arm. That seemed like a very fast pr pr process. Yeah, you got it. You were early. You were early in that that process. Not for here. I mean, oh, it's really? so weird. I mean, in Texas, we are, we are, it's like it's over. For us, mm -hmm. it's over. It's not, you still wear masks, but I wear masks really for other people to make them feel comfortable. Uh -huh. And, and I don't like them. I mean, I rip them off as fast as I can. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I don't know. Honestly, if I'm being completely, you know, girlfriend to a girlfriend, this thing just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, the yeah. numbers and, and my parents have lost a couple of friends. And so, I mean, it's very real and, and I'm not, sure, I'm not trying to go sure. down that rabbit hole, but it, right. it just, I always scratch my head and say, I don't get it. I mean, yeah. I, I just, I don't get it. It doesn't totally add up. And I, and I hear you and I'm sort of in that space of like, okay, it's bit to me, it feels like it's been enough time where, um, I'm like, okay, shaking out which, which vaccine 
I would, if I would do it, cause I, I, I'm starting to fall more in the category of, I just don't want to be hindered in any way. And I work with clients one-on-one and mm-hmm. I know I, um, and I, I've been working a lot with clients in person. And so, and, and many of them are like, I've had my vaccine and I'm like, great. I have not. Um, but I don't tell them that unless they, you know, they don't, they don't ask and they still want to meet in, in person, but there's a part of me that's like, it would be nice to just be able to reassure them. And I think the, the Pfizer seems to me like if I were to get it, I'd probably get the Pfizer. Mm -hmm. Um, Charlie had that one. Yeah. Did he have any, like, how did, how did that go for him? First one was fine. Second one, he ran a fever and he didn't feel very well. Um, and for how long? Said, two days for him. Um, but oh, then wow. I know people, Charles had his second shot. He had the same one I had. He was fine. Charles's mm-hmm. mom had hers. She was fine. My mom, yeah, my, my, mom. my family have all had it. Not, not my, my nuclear family, but my birth family in Hawaii, they've all, they were like, sign me up right away. And I was just like, Whoa, no way. I did, I just, yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, though, I have to tell you that because my mind went down this hole of, oh my gosh, you're going to have to have papers and show it. And I really wanted to push back against that. The passport. Yeah. But once I made up my mind to have it and I, I got it the next day I woke up and I was like, oh yes. I mean, I felt free. I really Mm -hmm. did. And Mm -hmm. I, I mean, and I don't, I know in Australia, I think it's 12 weeks apart. You take it then 12 weeks after and here it's four weeks. Well, depending on which one you get and I mean, why can't we just get one and be yeah, I don't 80% know, like, there? Yeah. I mean, I don't know why you would have one place with just four days, uh, four weeks, and then one with 12. But um, I've really been relying on other people who are investigating it because that doesn't, for me, I'm just sort of feeling my way through it. I'm trusting my gut. Yeah. Um, and and I've, it's been a, a strong no for me. And I have like North Carolina recently passed legislation to ban passports. And I, I just want the right to choose. Like I want people to have the right to choose in our country. Wait, pa- to ban passports, what passports? I mean, pa- the passports are the doc, you know, like show me your papers that you've had the, the vaccine so you can travel, that kind of thing. Okay, so by papers, we're talking this. I mean, right. that's nothing. Right, right. But a, pa- a, a passport, I mean, I think- It'll be more. Well, I think, I don't know how you will be able to avoid um, the way that they're doing things. They're restricting travel if you haven't had it. But I just, I personally think it's silly because if you have the vaccine, you should, you know, like, first of all, you shouldn't worry about like you're vaccinated, right? So you shouldn't have to, I don't understand why you would have to- yeah, have to wear the mask. So that doesn't make sense to me. Um, and then, but also traveling, it's like travel if you want, you know, like, I, I mean, am. I know that the, the out of town. cool, where are you going? We can Colorado. change the subject too. Yeah. Ooh. No, no, I, 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 um, and I, well, but I think that you bring up some really good points and I think that it is something I, I just can't, I feel like I'm trying to nail a snail to the wall. I mean, it doesn't, it it just, it, it, everything changes. I think that was really supposed to be a (laughs) jellyfish, but everything keeps changing. I mean, it it is, it is like, I, I tune out. I don't listen to it. I don't listen to the news. I don't listen. I I just don't. But every time I get in my husband's car, there's, you know, NPR is on or something else is on. And, and it is, and I hear people say, oh, well, when it mutates, if it mutates, well, we'll have to do this again. And this may be an annual thing. I'm like, I'm not doing it. I'm not. Yeah. I mean, now I will tell you that I'm vaccinated twice. I'm, I'm done. I am yeah. not doing it again. Barring some huge thing. I'm not doing it again. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's fantastic. I, I'm on record. Well, <laughs> I don't get the flu shot. I mean, I know I, I, I don't get the flu shot either. Every time I ever got the flu was because I had, it was the year I got the flu shot. Well, and then they'll tell you, <laughs> oh, but that wasn't really the flu that you got. You got something and it looks like the flu. It was like, it's the, it's the flu. I mean, you know what? It I, looks was like told, not- I was told something different. I was told, um, well, they picked two strains out of a possibility of like 30 or something. And then sometimes they win and sometimes they don't. And it's like, so it's a crapshoot either way. Why am I getting- I've had the flu one time. Why aren't we life. talking about our immune systems and how powerful they are and how powerful they can be made? You know why? That's the part that feels like a huge missing component. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, 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 and what we talk about best is the spirit realm and all of the, all of the extrasensory, you know, feelers out there, the antenna that we have, that we can tell us what we need. And I think in, in sort of doing the deep introspection during this time for me, it's been about, well, what is it that my soul is really needing to know in this moment? Like, why am I feeling resistance? Because I have friends on all ends of the spectrum, right? Like people who are like, you know, feeling, feeling past life, uh, you know, um, you know, like uh, authoritarianism in their, in their past life history where they're like, I gotta fight it. I gotta like against my dead body, you know, over my dead body. And then the other people who are just like, I'm vaccinated. I can't wait. And like, yay, you know, so it's like, and, and I, you know, each person has a different experience on that continuum and they get to figure it out. It doesn't have, it's such, it's a personal choice. It's a personal choice. It is. And, but people will fight back as it always is. But you want to know my biggest aha of this whole thing. And you're right. You're Tell absolutely me. right. Oh my gosh. So I was, I was talking with a girlfriend of mine and I need to set this up. So she had Lyme, Lyme disease. I remember when she got it, she was, she they were in West Texas. And she said, I woke up and I had the spider bite looking thing with a bullseye around it. And then she felt like she had the flu. And I mean, it just sort of went from there. Everybody told her she was crazy. Everybody told her, no way. We don't have Lyme in Texas though. <laughs> yeah, we do. I know three people that have died of it in Texas, but we don't have it here. And I mean, and, and everything she said didn't make sense. And then I watched this documentary under our skin and they explained it. And I mean, all you need, if you are, are bit by a tick that has, or a spider or, 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 or there are several mm-hmm. things that have it, you take antibiotics for two weeks. That's it. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it, you're done. If not, it, it, then it it's can kind of so take avoidable. It it's is so, yeah. But it was like the perfect storm. So, cause you had the doctors and this is not conspiracy. You can look this up. Like the doctor's hire like the insurance companies hired the doctors and I, it was just this really weird convoluted thing anyway go check it out if you're interested curious yeah um yeah so she had that and then our oldest sons are a week apart and i remember every time her son had a vaccine he ended up in the er and it took her a little while it was her oldest to figure out that there was something really going on here and so that like with his first. immune system yeah like he would break oh. out in these big hives oh. and he would i mean he got really sick so I put this together. I was driving to Houston to get my shot. It, the, um, I, they called me and said, Hey, you know, you, you can have the vaccine, but you have to do it these few days. And I was at spring break at my mom's house. And so I drove back in and I was talking to her. She's like, here, you don't get it. Don't get it. Please don't get it. Please don't get it. And she's your mom. On, no, no, no. This is my friend, your friend. Uh huh. And she's on um, Facebook and she's on these, um, these Facebook groups that, and there are people that have had issues. Their kids have had issues with vaccines and it's very true and it's very real. Yeah. Um, and so she was like, please don't get it. I, I know people that have gotten really sick with it and all this stuff. And I'm, I have this internal struggle going on. My son's yeah. al- already had it. And how do I say, I don't think it's safe. I'm not getting it, huh, but you have it. You yeah. know, I just felt yeah. like, oh, and like it's where my two worlds met. Right. Mm-hmm. So I started thinking and okay. So another little part of the story is when I was pregnant with number three, by this mm-hmm. point, I really heard the vaxxers, the anti-vaxxers. I mean, I, I heard them both and mm-hmm. I, and they're both very real people I loved. I mean, it, you know, both smart people, what, you know, I, so I couldn't just say, oh, you know what? They're just a little odd. No, no, right. no, they're not odd. This is yeah. what they lived. Yeah. And so I sat down with my great aunt who was a research scientist and she, her big thing was HIV and mm-hmm. she dedicated her entire life to this. So when I was pregnant with my son, 12, years ago, I sat down with her and I said, what do I do? And she Mm -hmm. said, Carrie, I had polio. I had, I mean, she had all these different things. And she said, we need to vaccinate. Mm -hmm. She said, but yes, there are people that it overwhelms their systems and whether we're giving to contra indicates. Yeah. Yeah. And she said, and if that's you, it's a hundred percent. She said, but for the norm, Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, you, you, everybody needs to get it. Otherwise these things are going to come back. Mm -hmm. But if there's extenuating circumstances, which in your case, there's not, she said, okay, wait, I'm not saying this right. She was saying, if you're that one in a million, 
then it's your whole life. Right. Mm -hmm. But for the other 999,000, then, you know, it's not a big deal. Right. And so I've always kind of lived with that and I don't have it. My kids are fine. I'm fine. Everybody's fine. So I was listening to my girlfriend tell me, please don't get the COVID shot, you know, the vaccine. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking in her world, it's a hundred percent vaccines are bad. Yeah. In my world, I'm fine. fine. You know? And so that's when I realized both people are right. Mm -hmm. Like, like both sides are very right. Mm -hmm. And if I watch my child and if I had Lyme disease and people were telling me, you know, you're making this up in your head, you're not really sick. And I ended up having to go to Germany to get a stem cell replacement so I could live. And I mean, my face was starting to kind of melt on one side and it had gone to my brain and people are here are telling me that I'm nuts. Then the conspiracy stuff quote, becomes very real. For her. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, that's, that's horrible that she's had to go through that. And I know people with Lyme too, who are like, yeah, I, and they want to travel and it's like, it's a real dilemma. And I think I, the part I think that feels really crappy and it's, I think this is more of a, of a cultural human thing is that we don't, we, we, we only see the polarities. It's like, oh, you know, it, like if you're questioning this vaccine, then you're an anti, you're instantly in that camp right. of anti-vax. And then the people like my mom had polio too. So I've noticed that people who have had polio are just like vaccinations are the most amazing thing you have like across the board. And I, right. and I, and that line of thinking is to me kind of bullshit too, because it's like, yeah. And they're like, let's just be open-minded about this. Like, I think the rush to get things, um, you know, like for me, I think it, it's working out perfectly. I, I didn't feel, I've just been following my intuition. Mm-hmm. Um, I was a big no for a long time. And now I'm, now that I feel like enough time has passed and there are enough people, people who have had yeah. it that are like, I'm good. It's like, okay. You know, and like people are like, my mom, she had it and she, she doesn't know anyone who had a hard time with the second one. And I was like, really, you didn't have any problem. She's like, not at all. And I, and I'm like, well, there, I know lots of people who felt like absolute crap with the second one that that's really standard. She's like, really? I had no idea. So you're in my show. Hi, Scott. (laughs) He's wearing like his jammies. That's hilarious. That's um, perfect. It's perfect. Filming at home, people. Yes. <laughs> I'm in my closet. He's not wearing his mask. He's totally like, no, he's not feeling compelled. He also has the like the most insane immune system of anyone on the planet that I've ever met. Um, but suffice it to say, I think it's an interesting thing because I think on a spiritual level, there are different interpretations that a person can come to, you know? Oh, absolutely. And it's, it's, but it, see for that, that for me, because I had to, I mean, you know me, I've been, I've been really, <laughs> can you see him? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, she's precious. <laughs> Is he coming back? Oh no, he's fixing the mat. No, no. It's... <laughs> no, really. He needs to come back. Come on, Waldo, come back. <laughs> that everyone is my husband. <laughs> Isn't he fun? So much fun. <laughs> so much. I know. I keep. Li- I keep looking, waiting for him to come back. No. Anyway, I, I. It just. It. It just for me. I had to. I realized that so many of my thoughts and so many. Nora. I, and I think I probably try to shove you down the hole with me. Um. No, I, you didn't. Well, no, I mean, I had to reconcile so many of my, you ideas. just drew your boundary. You're like, ah, no, nope, I'm not going there. Just back off. I've, you know, two of my kids have had the shots and I ain't talking about it. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Well, Emma sends us stuff and she sent me something. She's like, this is a very credible doctor. And, and it's like, I don't, if I did just really F up my system, mm-hmm. I don't want to hear it, you know? Right, and it's right. It's, and if we're that powerful, why can't we transmute stuff? Right. Why can't we, you know, right. I don't know, you know, right. Right. I think that's, I think that's why you really have to go within to answer because it's not just, 
you know, it's, I see it at like everything that's playing out. It's all external stimuli. It's all external points of reference and the internal point of reference. You like, you got to get quiet and tune in and what is it? And so I just shifted. I was totally a no. And then last weekend I, I hung out with some friends in the mountains and they've had it, but I just was like, you know, they're, they didn't, they weren't trying to convince me. I was just feeling into it and it just wasn't feeling rigid anymore. And I was like, huh, I'm softening. And I, and I don't, yeah, I don't feel, and I don't need to worry. Like I don't, I'm not an anti-vaxxer and I'm not a like all vaccines are necessary. I, right. I'm much more in the middle, like me you know, too. my kids had a, had a, um, what did you, what do you call it? You know, like a, um, a more drawn out vaccine schedule. I just like didn't want one at a time. Yeah. In an, I didn't wanna, system. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and I think honoring our innate knowledge is so critical because we'll get the answers that we need and it mm -hmm. changes from day to day. And we don't necessarily know why it just, I feel like we should have the right to to make up our minds. And that's why I don't like the mandates, but, um, but I don't I either, it. but it's pushing back. I had a friend of mine and, and we both know him. Um, I had a friend of mine that was um, telling me how it was changing the DNA. And I said, no, it's an RNA. And I had done research and I'd met with doctors and I talked and I said, okay, tell me about this because this mm -hmm. is what I'm hearing. They're like, no, no, no. And I, I understand, I understand why you feel that way. I mean, they weren't rude about it, right. but let me explain what this actually is. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay. And they don't mm -hmm. have the preservatives and they don't have, that's why they have to, you know, they thaw them out and they have to get them in arms. Oh, and, you, know, mm -hmm. you don't have the heavy mercury and metals uh, and lead and Right. And so well, that's good, but it was so, it was so contrary to what was out there in our world mm -hmm. and, and what the man was trying to do to us. And I was mm -hmm. just like, this is coming out ignorant, you know, yeah. do research. Don't be afraid to talk to a doctor. Right. Because by and large, scientists and doctors by and large have spent their lives trying to better things. Right. And I, and I do agree with that. I mean, I, I do agree. At least the ones that, I know. Right. Mm -hmm. I think, I think, I think that you could, most people, I think, get into the medical field because they want to help people. I mean, a lot of people also want the financial benefits sure. that come with it, but also the heat, like there has got to be, I'd imagine an innate healership to, to a large degree to most of them or else like, why would you want to be around people who aren't well? You don't go to school that long. I don't yeah. Think. That's a and, hard, and that's yeah. a hard go. You can go to law school. It takes three years versus, you know, fellowships and everything else. You're looking at it to what 12 additional years of schooling yeah. and, and that's, and you're broke all that time. And, and yeah, anyway, I mean, I, I don't, I, I don't yeah. <laughs> you know, and I just, so I think there are a lot of different components and I, and I, I started looking, I found this blog or not a blog. I found this podcast called, and I really don't listen to podcasts, oddly enough, um, called Conspirituality. Uh -huh. And That's it's, cool. a, isn't that a great name? Yeah. And it was, and, and I listened to a little bit of it. Um, and then some of it, and then I just, I kind of got what I, I, I needed. needed Adam, um, yeah. And, but it, it is someone that was in a cult twice, which cracks mm -hmm. me up. It's like, did you not learn the first time? But it's, so he's in a cult twice. I really need to learn that lesson. <laughs> yes. And, and then there was someone that was a yoga, like he was, hold on, um, a reporter. Uh -huh. And then he really strongly, I think he went to teacher training and became a yogi, not a yogi, but a, maybe. And, yeah. and, and so they come together so it's such an interesting background for all of them. And they come together to talk about like how the yogic com community, community now they're into wellness and they're in, you know, anti-vaccines and, you know, all this stuff. And, and they're like, now, wait a minute, where is the across the board? I mean, I know if I didn't, anyway, I don't want to get there, but it's so how all of this weaves in and how we got to like, like, how do you get to a place of these hard lines I won't vaccinate or this is wrong and this is right or I'm a Democrat, I'm a Republican or QAnon or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, like all of it right. together, this just different way of thinking. And 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 it was it was really interesting. And um 
because there are a lot of people out there that fill in the blanks because you have to, because we're not yeah. there. So we don't know Yeah, on either side, but that's really helped me kind of, I'm more I'm I, where I used to be way over here than I was way over here. And now I'm kind of more here. Like I've yeah. been on both sides. I can see yeah. it. So, so anyway, no, I, 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 it's, it is fascinating. And I, I, I remember in uh, science, um, taught, being taught that there are groupers and there are splitters. So, and it was just talking about like the human evolutionary tree and how some people are like, these like species are like, are together and you group them together because they're more alike. And then there are people who are like, well, these differences cause them to have to deviate from it. And I think that there are people, I mean, that's sort of an either or view, but I think there's, there's a way of being more open-minded. I think it's a very, to me, it feels like a very old paradigm notion to find something resonant that works for one person and then to feel like autocratic about it. Like, well, if it works for me, then it's got to freaking work for everybody else. And it's human like, nature. Mm -hmm. and, and I, but I think it's an old part of human nature. And the reason I say old is because we can perceive of something different. You know, we can perceive of living in a reality where we don't have to rule, uh, you know, under with the our, thumb. Yeah, yeah, under the thumb. Like we can actually consider that there's something and it doesn't need to be utopian. It can just be like what our country was really founded on. Like let people have the right to have different views, you know, let people like be okay with different views don't feel like it has any like it doesn't have to shut you down because they're not coming to get you if no one's coming to get you you can have your own point of view but now nowadays it's like oh you don't you know you didn't it's like it's like um um political correctness gone awry yeah it's gonna muck that's exactly right but you know what nora so charles and i were talking last night actually and we were talking about so i was talking He's not gonna listen to this. I was talk. I was talking to my dad, and my dad, Vietnam. You know, I know why he believes what he does. He's not Republican. He's not Democrat, but he's very conservative. And mm -hmm. he's like, ah, you need a gun up, and you need a, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and I said, Dad, you've been saying this mm -hmm. for years. Mm -hmm. And and this woman, the one that kind of helped me work through this vaccine thing, mm -hmm. um, she was telling me the same thing. She has recently woken up, and she's mm -hmm. just beautiful, wonderful. And she was like, oh my gosh, they're coming. Like, like you need to have water. You need to have two weeks supply. Exactly where I was two years ago. Mm -hmm. And do you, do you remember when um, David Wilcock was saying the grid's going to go down for two weeks and da, 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 da. He's still that, saying it. <laughs> well, she was saying that too. And I said, honey, they've been saying that now for years. And it's, I'm not saying it will happen. It won't happen. I, I just, I got really tizzied up about it a couple mm -hmm. of, maybe it's even three years ago now. Mm -hmm. And, and it just, and that's what I told my dad. And I was, I said, I, I just, I don't think we're having this big civil war that you keep Armageddon. having. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 and, but people want to believe that. So Charles and I were talking about that. He said, you know, I think there are some people genetically that are, mm -hmm. that are, and it's, it, it's almost like you're hardwired to believe it well to bring circle the wagons bring i need to protect i can't count on the government to protect me because especially if i'm protecting myself from them you know sure. and, and we need to arm up and we need and i'm not sure that he's not right because charles was like i just don't see it like i, I don't i right. understand that people see it he said but i'm just in I don't want it's to live like in an a epigenetic like program. I mean, exactly. you know, yeah, and exactly. I think it's, I think that's fair. I mean, it's, it's, it kind of takes it out of the world of, I need to convince you because yeah. if you're hardwired that way, yeah. You know? Yeah. If it, if it's it not makes so you, yeah. If it makes you feel like you're doing what's right for you and your family, you got to do it right. You got to do that. You got to honor that. Right. Um, right. And I think just looking at the trajectory of human evolution of human beings like life is getting better and better and better you know and we don't have enough to fight against right well and i think that the people who have had you know like family members of mine were were killed in the holocaust and you know maybe there's a part of them that feel like you know you got to watch your back or whatever i don't i don't have that program either but i also don't have a fear of death i'm not right. a, i also don't believe that i came here to be fragile. I'm on a surface of a planet that is, you know, like 
twirling through space. Like what about that feels safe, <laughs> you know? And I think that the whole safety conversation of like, you gotta, I gotta make you feel safe is like, no, I, I really don't need to make you feel safe or feel like, you know, like I wanna live a gritty life. That's why I came here. I wanna, not that I want pain and suffering, but I just, I want the physicality of it. I wanna like whatever is to come, I wanna be prepared or whatever, if that feels innate to me, but I, I, I don't wanna be afraid to live my life. Right, well, because so many things, okay, so Tiff and I've talked about this and you know, with Daniel and so, so for you guys out there, um, she has a son that has a genetic disease and, and it's a, degenerative one potentially. And, um, and I'd asked her at one point, I said, if you knew 10 years ago where you would be now, how would you feel? She said, it would scare me, but because it's so incremental and you just take things day by day, things are so, what they are. That's so good to hear you know? that too. And, and, and I get, I think that's, I think that's why we're, we're given those things. We're given, um, things in the way that they do. And I, I also emphatically trust that we're orchestrating things behind the scenes. Our higher selves yep. have, have intention, you know, um, I've been doing research on womb regression and, you know, part of the, the research is to, to go to the time just before you came into the body, just before the conception. So, really like asking questions like, are you present at the conception? What kinds of things are going on before you come into this life? What kinds of preparation takes place? Who are you meeting with? What are you, you know, what are you um, thinking about? What is your feeling about coming in? And you know, what's so cool is most people are like, I'm freaking so into it. I'm so energized. I can do this. Like, it's sort of like a prep pep rally a lot of times like we could do this and sometimes they're like oh, diving man. out of the plane yeah it's it's gonna be a really tricky one but the guides are like this is you know like you got you a plan you. you got it you're gonna you're gonna kill it you're gonna nail it and um and some lifetimes that people are like um you know the minute they get into the body and they start feeling mom's energy and mom has fear or are not necessarily wanting the baby, you know, those kinds of things, then they start to feel really uh, like anxiety about coming into the life. But it's interesting as you like observe the trajectory of the development from like spirit realm into the physical body. And then throughout the pregnancy, a lot of times it's like, woohoo. And then as you progress, it's like, oh, oh dear. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> are we sure about this? <laughs> and that's all the human stuff that's already starting to happen. Well, you know, Jack, my son, yeah, we're getting too old for me to probably use their names. I just remember where he was too. I know I've told he you this. 16 now? 15. Yeah, oh he'll be 16 gosh. in September. So he would, he may not have even been two. He would roam around the house and just cry and say, I want to go home. I want to go home. I want to go home. I'm like, oh man, I don't blame you, buddy. But it's, um, you know, so I think there's a lot. I, I, I know there's a lot to this. I mean, that I think there's a lot to that. I know there is. And I think that, I do think the soul kind of pops in and out. Don't you yeah. think while they're pregnant? Even I think after they're born. Oh yeah. Well, not everybody. I think, you know, there's, so people, what this is sort of what I've been finding is that people who have a lot of experience, you know, souls who have in, incarnated a lot of times who have done it before, they get in there, get a lay of the land there, and they don't really need to be in the developmental phase, but some people really enjoy it. They're like, oh, this feels so good. I love it. It's like this, 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 this fear, feeling of, of becoming and tranquility or whatever, you know, it's different for each person. And many people are like, no, I'm just, I'm checking out my mom. I'm checking out the environment. I'm hanging out with my guides. We're playing, you know, I'm just, you know, I don't really drop in until I'm like in the birth canal, you know, that kind of stuff. See, then I wonder, our souls have to braid in. They just have to braid in as, as, as we evolve on this timeline. Because I say that, I look back. You mean more I, of ourselves come mm -hmm. in? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, there's just stuff I just could not figure out. And I just, I was just not there. And, and, and I, I mean, if you, even if you take a more black and white view, to be an eight-month-old versus a 42-year-old, 
I mean, there's such evolution there and I'm not sure. And I would love for you to weigh in on that because how does that work? Because clearly all of your capacities, your facilities are not facilities, your, well, that too, but faculties aren't quite online mm -hmm. because you couldn't be who you are now and sit in a dirty diaper crying, waiting, hungry. You know, I, I don't know how to reconcile those two. Well, I think, you know, it's funny that you asked that because I was just talking with a girlfriend on a walk and, sh and her daughter um, was born with a pretty substantial birth defect where her, um, her, I don't know what it's called, but the rectum wasn't completely formed or that there, there was like growth over it. So it wasn't, there wasn't an actual, um, right. anus. Mm -hmm. there, the musculature was there and it, it just, but it needed to be created. And, um, and that forced the baby to be like rushed, you know, into like get, separated from mom right away. And like get, instantly going yeah. and get, and get in surgeries and, and all that stuff. And so, um, but what's interesting is her, uh, a woman, like when she was about eight months pregnant, she told me about how this, this very tuned in woman who uh, taught, she happened to teach um, uh, hypnobirthing. And she, she was at a, my friend was at a, um, uh, like a, a wellness appointment of some sort. I'm just waiting in the waiting room. And this woman saw her and she just like clicked on in some way and came over and put her hands on her belly. And she was like, okay, you know how people do that Hello. sometimes. Uh, your, your belly is my territory, but she was, she didn't feel like it was inappropriate somehow. And so she kind of like, wow, I'm sorry. Hi. I, I just have to tell you, like, I could hear your baby calling to me. She's like, hello, hello. <laughs> and the baby was reaching out like sort of on a, on a conscious, like telepathic level. And she's like, your baby has so much energy. She knows exactly why she's coming here. And, um, and I, and I think that there's something to that as well, like depending on how the trajectory of life um, is unfolding along with sort of the, the physiological dynamics of the body, um, you know, where the soul is on its evolutionary journey, all of these attributes are, are considerations and how things are playing out. Mm -hmm. And I think babies, I mean, just like how Jack was, um, I mean, remember you telling me that Jack, you know, always wanted to wear a suit because of who his, you know, he had a, 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 a recollection of who he was in a, in a previous life. And that I think is important. Like that sort of bleed through um, helps us in some way. I mean, sometimes it also needs to be healed if it's, it's, if it's creating confusion yeah. about who we are, but um, I think it's it, whatever is, whatever is, is necessary for this human experience we get amen and and we just sort of get to trust it and lean into it you know yeah no i i i we absolutely get it but we also know the signs i mean i don't know about you but i've always felt like there's this invisible hand pushing me and it's like how did it end up here you know i mean it it, it is you know, well, you who do left. you think that hand is? What well, it's, you know? It, it's me. I mean, yeah. it's 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 my higher self or my guides, and I'm I'm believing. It's more Elvis. More. It's Elvis. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. He's like with his hip. Come on, baby. Come on, let's go. <laughs> I was actually looking at pictures of him the other night. Um, so I'm designing wallpaper, and and it's oh, the, I gotta see. Oh, it is. You guys don't know Carrie is a designer, and she has the best taste of You're anyone so in the whole wide world. I don't know, man. Thank you for that. But I look not... out, Joanna Gaines. <laughs> well, this is it's it's like a, a safari. Um, like at the you know, you have the elephant and the sloth and the cheetahs and the flamingos, and then you have UFOs and Elvis going up. <laughs> oh, that you know what that's it sounds so ancient, like ancient, almost um, like Aboriginal. It's 1111. Oh, so let me see. Oh, no, uh, that was just the cat. Um, here, let me see if I can find it. So what was my point in saying that? There was, I was, I was telling you that for a reason. Um, that you're designing the wallpaper? Yeah. And we were talking about oh, Elvis. Elvis. No, it's just that yeah. Elvis is making it into my wallpaper. So it's- Oh my you know, gosh, you got it. I can't wait to see that. Elvis and aliens. Yeah, well, I'll send you, I'll, I'll send it, I'll send it to you. Um, yeah, so, it, so it's kind of fun, but there has been a big shift. I have had a big shift. Tell me. 
so yeah, I know because we haven't spoken in a while. I know. It is, well, I mean, this is very, very recent. Um, it, like in the last week, I got really mad. I mean, I was just like, fuck you, Jesus, fuck you guys. I'm tired. I'm done. I'm done with all this. You know how, and that's always my sign that I'm getting ready to go to the next <laughs> stage and, or whatever. I mean, it's not a trajectory. In case this is familiar for any of you listening, like pay very close <laughs> attention here. He didn't like slink. I think come somebody on. wants to, babe, just come in and say hello here <laughs> on the show. He's so cute. <laughs> what do you say? Is that, I just want to go outside. <laughs> okay. All right, fine. Well, um, yeah. So, so, and I was just saying this probably a month ago that I hadn't, I have not had one of those in a long time where it's like, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. Mm-hmm. Metaphysics, spirit guides. I'm done. You know, you guys give me nothing. And, um, ha. So I, was at a crossroads and I, I, how long have I been at that damn crossroads? Quite a while. My car. It's not the same crossroad. It's not the same. It's a different, it may seem like a crossroads, but I think that's the symbol of, of, of where you're showing, you're showing up. The crossroads is the choice point. That's true. It's the symbol of the choice point. It's never the same choice point. That's true. That's true. You know, that, that's a very good point. You're, that's a very good point. It's, it's like the spiral and you feel like you're at the same spot, but you don't realize that. It's really it's just a symbolic on the imagery vertical. of the choice point. That's how that's it shows true. up for you. It's like, choice point. Ah, ah. oh, here I am. It, and okay. it's not the same. Just think, Sorry, guys. Think, of, think of where you were a year ago. Are you at the same place in your life? No. What about five years ago? No. Right. Of course so, not. so if you if you're ever in doubt, thinking that it's the same choice point, remember where you've come from. That's true. That's very true. Thank you for that. I, I that's true. I have. So I I I spoken with somebody, and and she basically said the paradigms have changed, like they've shifted, and and I and I was. It's like, I don't understand what you're saying. Yeah, but you're doing this. That seems like an old paradigm. I was very excited about Seth. I started reading the Seth material, very excited about the framework. And and anyway, it's like, oh, that's old stuff. I'm like, how can that be old stuff? Anyway, but then I got it. I got it. And it is the difference. I've been living from here, not from here, because this messes stuff up, but I'm a translator. So I can take, if you say, Carrie, I love blue, I can figure out how to figure out which blue you're talking about. Cause mm-hmm. I mean, how many color blue? See, I just did it like the translating thing and, and the teaching. And when you teach you're in your head and when, well, I mean, to, well, the information. Yes. So, yes. and that's where my tangled up comes from. It, that's when I can't talk and the words won't come out because I am trying to take a very archaic language and, put framework around a concept that is new to me yeah. and, and then trying to say it and put it out. And it was just life altering. And it is, and I mean, we all say, yes, live through the heart from the heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. But for me to truly Embody live from that. the heart. Yeah. So yeah. on the show, it doesn't matter if I'm talking about phones or hair, it doesn't matter. It is That's about, so cool. it's about what's being transmitted Mm-hmm. It's about coding. It's actually about codes. Yeah. Codes being transmitted. Totally. And, 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 but when you're in your head, me, me, when mm-hmm. I'm in yeah. my head and I'm translating and I'm trying to get something right and I'm trying, the codes aren't there. No. But when I'm excited and we're just shooting the shit like this, the codes are there. Well, and you know, I, I, I feel the reason that that is, is because when you're in the frequency that is of the intellect, you can't be at the frequency that these codes are, that you're translating. The co- they're, they're a higher, refi- more refined energy that the heart can translate, but the head can't. And so it's, it, it, it doesn't, it's not coming, it won't come through. Right. You know, so that's right. why there's, there needs to be that coherence. So the harmony of the, well, and I've heard, have you heard people talking about the three brains, Mm-mm. the, the head brain, the heart brain and the gut brain? No, that there's neurology in all of those locations. And so heart math is the Institute that studies coherence between the heart and the brain, the heart and the heart and the head brain, um, the heart brain. And so the coherence when they're working in, in, 
in sequence and in, in harmony, um, you you become a su supercomputer basically. You're and that's accessing your subconscious potential, right? You're accessing everything. Yeah, yeah. Your your broad your broadest soul. That's why your soul self drops in and is like, here we are. We're a part of this whole thing, right? It's Got not this. on the outskirts, going like, okay, how do we how do we break through that intellectual barrier? How can I give this sign to Nora or Carrie, you know, and and so that they get it? And you know, here's a sign. But when we're in that harmonic state, and then even to the point where we're including our gut brain too, it becomes, and I heard my friend Tracy talking about it in such a cool way. It's like, when, when I'm talking to clients, it's like, would you rather be working with your whole brain or one third of your, intel, one third of your, your mental capacity? It's like, nobody wants just a third of their mental capacity, you know? So, so what's the gut brain? The gut brain is like your gut feeling. Oh, like, gut brain. I was thinking like gut, you know, like, like beer gut. No, 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 no. <laughs> like, you know, we, we always talk about gut and, and with our immune system, I was thinking that. Gut yeah. Brain. Yeah. Gut brain. Well, so, I mean, but wait. that, but, but the, the health of our gut brain, I think has a lot to do with how harmonic or how in tune with our gut we are. Mm -hmm. right? Like it's a, re a, re a reflection of our overall wellness. So, I mean, that's just, that's, that's something that's kind of getting popular and it's just using that, that frame to talk about what you're talking about, which is you are coming online to a deeper knowing of yourself and what you do. And you translate in a way that I think is really masterful and I've seen you do it and it is draw it's it is it's like a light language or it's a it's a it is a it's a channeling of the higher realm knowledge into something that is more earth-based so that you can be that bridge but that's what's changed is that I no longer have to translate it Oh, I see if what that, you're right. Right. I see what you're saying to so me. I, the translation is, is just bringing it from the ethers into the world. And I, I remember thinking this with politics, I would listen and think, Ooh, Ooh, I love the way they say that. And, and that will be my argument. That will be my, you know, I just want to regurgitate what they just said is basically what I was saying. And, and I right. could never remember it. And I couldn't remember details or facts and because I wasn't supposed to. Mm -hmm. And so that's the difference. I remember when I did that, I did that uh, pilot, that show down in Mecca Allen. Mm -hmm. I couldn't, I was so in my head. I, you would have walked up and I couldn't tell them what your name was. I mean, I could not remember. A that's sentence. the one where you had to get killed on mm -hmm. camera. Uh huh. Yeah. But that was, but that was, it was so, that's when I, I realized being locked in my head. And when we started the show, that's the way I was, I couldn't think. And so that is the head. But when yeah. you drop in your heart, it's like, eh, and you don't need to, you don't need to qualify, clarify. People get it. People yeah. know. I mean, you could say fuck off and people be like, <laughs> that's funny because right. they're, they're feeling it. They're not hearing it. Yeah. And, and it, and you, and it's a way of being able to reach someone because I'm not talking to you. Mm -hmm. Our mouths aren't talking. My heart's talking to your heart mm. and we're feeling, and it, that just gave me chills, but it it's is, beautiful. it is, it, it it's profound. And, and for me, it seems so e it, it seems so simple, but it is such a shift. You know, for example, Tiff and I did a show a couple of days ago and she woke up and Daniel had a fever and, and, and it was, and I just felt myself going, you know, I mean, just being pouty. Mm -hmm. she, she said, you know, I can come over for an hour. Or I could, and I was like, no, you can't, you know, if your son mm -hmm. is running a fever, you need to be home. It, mm -hmm. it is, you need, I mean, we're moms, this is, mm -hmm. but I was disappointed. And, and it, and it was interesting because I dropped in my heart. It's like, okay, what are we going to do? Mm -hmm. And she said, do you want to do? Yeah, let's do. We had so much fun. And we came up with this idea because Daniel can't get the vaccine. And so if he did have COVID and which you don't wish that on anyone, but if he yeah. can't get the vaccine and he had COVID and this is as bad as it is, score. I mean, yeah, then you have yeah. the antibodies and right. Right. And he'll be healthy. And, and, you know, and so was it, that, did he get it? Mm -mm, no, no, he just had it just, feel like uh, a little, uh, a little, probably a little spiral something. thing. Yeah. And so it was, but it was that the head, and I do believe the mental body 
only knows what's right in front of it. Mm -hmm. So where is the room for the new framework? Where's the room for the expansion? And, and that mental body is also the one that starts making up the stories, goes to the end. Oh, well, this happens. It must mean that, nah, 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 you know. And well, so that programming is, is accessible through the subconscious mind. So the, so the, 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 mental, the mental mind creates the story, right? Mm -hmm. And then the subconscious mind takes it on as programming. And, and it's through that subconscious realm that we can reprogram. So, cause you can't, you can't reprogram through the intellect. It just, it wants, it, it's going on what is already written as right. writ large. And so it's like, and it's, and it's, you know, what I like to think about is too, is it's not a bad aspect, you know, like we don't want to, no. we don't want to throw out the, out the baby with the bathwater. It is our, our minds are miraculous, wonderful, helpful, useful things. And the, it's a, it's an aspect we just give it, but we've, we've given, given it, it too much power. We've, yeah. We've given it, we've given it superior value over everything else. Well, and that, and I think that that is what, uh, one of my biggest, because I was stuck in this place of, of, I mean, we've talked about this before of, I can't see me. Like I, I was talking with someone and she was asking me questions. She's waking up. There are a lot of people waking up right now and she was asking me questions. And she said, so what is your, like, what do you do? I don't know, you know, and I, and it really bugged me. And I was like, ah, ah you know, whiner. Mm -hmm. And so, <laughs> and what I realized is that my worlds were so separated mm -hmm. and I rely so heavily on validity and verifiable and, and I put them all in quotes. Um, and this is what that is. <laughs> Or I'm filling you up. Um, no, by the way, look at my boobs. I'm going through menopause and it's giving me boobs. It's really? Weird. Sorry, squirrel. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Bizarre. No, anyway, so I'm uh, sorry. Um, like, show me. <laughs> All right. We don't have to. I'll show you later. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I, I just, I realized that I was so, trying so hard so for example, taking all these videos of craft in the sky, but I won't mm -hmm. show them. I mean, I'll show them to you. I'll show them to Tiff. I'll show, but I won't show them. I won't put them out. And, or I'm writing and I get the most incredible information. I mean, I, it's not my information. It's coming in, but I won't share it. And I won't, you know, I, and, and Tiff has been asking me, she's like, can we, can we do this? Nope. And, and so, and it is because I can't qualify it and I, and, and I, and I can't contain it and it's mm -hmm. and there's, I don't know. So anyway, so that was part of part of my what has been going on here recently. Like busting I broke through, through that. Ah. I did. I did. And and last yesterday I went over a parking garage at the very top. Nobody there. No trees, of course, because I don't want bugs. Like I, I don't want I don't want to put anything out and say that's a UFO. If and then find out it's a bug. And it's not because I don't want to be wrong. I mean I'm wrong all the time. It's I feel like I think it had the intention has to be so my intentions have to be so pure mm -hmm. that if I knowingly am not really sure about something and I put it out as look at what this is, it's mm -hmm. almost like doing research and then I read somebody and they think I'm wonderful mm -hmm. and I actually kind of cheated. Like that's right, the way I feel. It's an integrity component. I, I'm here. That's what I'm hearing from you. You want you want the highest integrity. Right. Right. And that's and so. I sat, I meditated and I had Skittles in the car. I had, I was laying Skittles down. Skittles the dog. Oh yeah. Skittles <laughs> like, my see, dog. I meditated with, with my candy. <laughs> yeah. I forget. Yeah. And I, and I shot it and I, and I took maybe four or five videos and I looked, I didn't really see much. And it is one of those Texas, like not a cloud in the sky. It mm -hmm. is just a pure, and it was a almost high noon. It was amazing. And if I did see a bird or if I did see a bug, come by, I'd say bug, you know, so mm -hmm. I would remind mm -hmm. myself. And when I went back and watched it, but I didn't really get much. So then I get home and I, I have to up the contrast and these things are so fast. And it was oh, incredible. I have, I have several things that come in and it looks like it kind of fragmented then came back together and it looks like a rainbow. And it looks like a, I, I showed my son, he's like, mom, that looks like a pod. 
I know. Wow. I know. So, I but it is that it. connection. And yeah. And so I'm putting together the show um, because Tiff said, I want to, this last show, it's like, I want to interview you and I want to see where you are. And, 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 and she asked the question, it's like, what would it take for you to believe? For you to mm. believe? Mm. Like, ooh, that's a good question. So anyway, yeah. I just threw like no, I think that's, questions. no, that's really incredible. I think, you know, so many things strike me about what you're saying is, first of all, um, I think it's really interesting that when you're doing something that you're passionate about, there is somehow there's this internal struggle to, to convey that to the world as like valuable. And I think that that's something that a lot of people can relate to because, you know, you got a degree in design, you got something that was like, okay, this tells you you're a designer. And then it's like, oh, I can do that. I can, I can work for money. And, and some, someone, I, I went went through all the hoops and then someone said, I can do that. And then with the things that you just become, you know, have find mastery in, and, and somehow there's like this, uh, you know, incongruence. And it's, and I think that's what we're doing as a culture right now. Like people are starting to realize that the value comes from within, because if you don't find what you do valuable, no one else is going to do it. And there's that integrity component too. Like I can't, and what I hear you saying is I can't in good conscience know that if I didn't do this in integrity, then I can't offer it in pure, in, it, with a pure heart and right. feel like this is actually valuable, which I think is so beautiful because it's like, it really shows how integrity is something that really, really matters to you. And, um, but we have to, in, the, <clears throat> in this realm that we're in, mm -hmm. that we're we, talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That we, I'm sorry. It, this is, um, uh, what? I know. I just, I didn't, I thought I had my phone turned off or my thing turned off and nothing, and it, nothing showed up on our end. Okay, good. And, and it's, uh, so I just think that it's like a sieve anyway, mm -hmm. for a lot of people, it's not a, a, a solid con container. Mm -hmm. Um, where, like you said, I mean, like if I needed an attorney, I would go to somebody that's a licensed attorney. I mean, that's easy. That's a solid right. container. Right. Um, and this isn't. And so when people are always like, well, what does that mean? What do you like? They want, they want the context of their understanding, you know, hit too. like, it's not, you know, like I need to recognize what you're doing. And, and I think that we're entering a realm, which I think is the new realm of, um, artistry, right? Like this, you, we get to be whoever, a conglomeration of whatever attributes we want, you know, we're, I mean, we're still far from a point of view where, um, you know, like you're going to still need the validation of like medical professionals because there are people who want that, you know, there are people who on, you know, want to deliver that, like I'm a doctor, this is my board certification, blah, blah, blah. And then people who are like, well, I'm going to you and I need to see that in order to validate it. But over time, I think as consciousness um, expands and people start to trust their own internal guidance about what's going on, it makes sense. I mean, maybe this is, we're talking about hundreds of years or thousands of years, people will start to just be more telepathic and knowing and just know when there's a yes, like, yes, I agree in my body and I feel it. I know it to be true or no, this is a no for me and just operate from that place. Then it, there won't be a need to prove in any other way other than what we're feeling internally. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it does. It does. And that's something because, so we're talking, if we're, if we're talking about, and I asked Tiffany this on the show, um, if we're talking about this 5D, um, everybody mm -hmm. talks about 5D, mm -hmm. this expansion or this ascension into this new world, it helps to have a framework. Mm -hmm. It helps to and, and, and we're not, I mean, that's obviously mental, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, piecing that together, but to have mm -hmm. something, what do you envision that looking like? Me? So, yeah, I want, I, I'm, I'm, I'm adding to my framework. So what, what would you, what would an idyllic world, maybe not idyllic because I'm not sure there's ever such a thing, but what would a 5d, if you were part of it, the architect, if you were the mm -hmm. architect trying to create it, what would that look like? 
Well, I think my perception of where we're heading has really shifted. I, I think for a while I was really buying into the idea that there's going to be just like this huge, like kaboom, we're evolved. And I, and I think that what I feel is probably happening is just a gradual um, expansion of what is possible for humanity. And, and I think, you know, it's possible that earth can have all of the above. Um, I think I'm really interested in communities that want to be expanded in their consciousness. And for me, that is deviating from a, a polarized war paradigm where there needs to be, there needs to be a fight or there needs to be um, a rightness. It's, it's more of like, what about the shades of gray and like letting it be more of a love-based, I know it sounds cheesy, love-based reality where there's more trust in ourselves and more trust in each other, taking care of each other, just a more um, high integrity reality. Um, because I just find it super boring to be, I feel like we're just cycling into the paradigm of war where it's competition and dog eat dog and watch your back and, you know, and, and you know, defund the police and, you know, police shooting innocent people and, you know, all, all this stuff. And it's like, I just, I just feel like we have, we have the raw material to be so much more, but we're still so entrained to think that this is how we do it. Um, so to me, it feels almost like less of a spiritual, like, I don't believe that there's going to be this like solar flash that's going to happen. And, you know, I think we're already hardwired with what it, what it takes to do this evolution. It's all totally within us and within our, our means. Um, and, and so to me, that looks like, that just looks like people um, doubling down on, on love and on living their best lives, on um, setting their mind, creating mindset shifts where they can, they're, they're optimized and they're optimistic and they're, they're looking to their best selves and moving beyond victimhood and healing and you know all of that stuff. So it just to me it feels like a, a simple um, you know fork in the road for people like new choice points. Like I don't have to I don't have to feel like crap. I don't have to feel like I'm chasing my tail. Like where people just feel like expansion. And I believe that that's really why we came here in the, into the physical reality. Cause on a spirit, on a soul level, we're totally unlimited. We're like, yeah, I can manifest anything. I can do whatever, but I'm not in a physical body when I'm in the spirit realm. So I come into a physical body. Why, why do I come into a physical body? And for me, it's to have a good freaking time. <laughs> yeah. And to experience the conflict. I mean, experience yeah. the, the grittiness. Well, and what is the root of all conflict? Separation. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we, we can't experience it on that side. We can't experience, mm -hmm. we don't experience emotion because emotion is just a director, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, if I'm feeling yeah. great or I probably should always feel great, but if you're not feeling great, then there's something going on. Yes. And you look at that. Yeah. And, and we're emotional Amen. beings. So mm -hmm. yeah, I just think it's, I agree with you. And I, I just, then I'm sorry, I talked about this last week. Um, I think Not on that, this show. Well, that's Go true. Girl. <laughs> All right. No, I, I think that, I think that we, if you want to experience, Wendy talked about this too. If you want to experience, if you want to stay in that duality conflict mindset, you can. Absolutely. You may, you may go somewhere else. I mean, yeah. you may, there is a place for you. There's a place mm -hmm. for your soul. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not bad. It's not good. But I think we're being called, actually, the way I said it, it's like you had a rager the night before and then you wake up the next morning. You're like, oh my gosh, this place is so messy. And you know, people are passed out and hung over. And it's like, you got to get it cleaned up. And mm -hmm. I think that's what we're in the process of doing right now is cleaning, cleaning it up. And I think- um, So you believe that there's going to be like a real event? Mm -mm. Yeah. No, it's already happened. The event mm -hmm. has already happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We now have access to that energy. Mm -hmm. And we now have, I think that's why there's such a wobble going on right now. And mm -hmm. that's what I like to call it. It's a wobble. Mm -hmm. And I think people are leaving. They're jumping ship like crazy. Yeah. Um, and I think that it is, 
And, and maybe COVID is a part of what facilitates that. Do you, you know, know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Like an epidemic makes sense in a way. Well, I mean, we have them every so, so often. often. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why we think that we've created it here. I mean, like, like I mean, we have created it, but like we've, right. like first why time that, we've ever experienced that it. There's maybe a higher purpose. There, there's, there's bigger stuff going on than we, our human minds can figure out. Yeah, but I don't think it's from a nefarious point. I of have view. let go of the rabbit hole of the evil. Well, I okay. I'm gonna tell you this, and I know this is counter to everything I've said. Um, <laughs> tell me, I love it. Don't worry about it. Well, yesterday, okay, I am menopausal. That is that does kind of heighten my <laughs> my emotions a little bit. Um, Yesterday I was watching, that may be too much information, but anyway. I'm with you, sister. <laughs> I was watching a series, uh, where is it? I think it's on HBO Max uh -huh. maybe. And it's about the first wives. It's about the you know pr president's wives. And the very oh. first one was Michelle o Obama. Obama. Mm -hmm. I know nothing about her. I mean, I wasn't, I, I wasn't anti him. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was proud yeah, of the I, fact. I voted for him. I didn't, I didn't know anything about him. And that's mm -hmm. what bothered me. But then of course I didn't research and, and, but I'd bought into the whole Democrat Republican thing. I, I whatever, you know, I'd bought into yeah. that. And, yeah. and, and I just remember th thinking why, you know, why is he qualified? I mean, that was truly my, my thought process. And I remember having a dream, a very, very visceral dream about, and he and I were sitting talking and he's like, what will it take to get like to reach other people. And, and we just had this long talk. It wow. was really bizarre. I mean, I think he- You were his advisor. I know nothing about him. And I mean, I, but again, I just want to be very clear. I was very, very proud. I, I don't see color. I mean, I, I do see color because I think that color is important. I think that heritage is important, but I don't care. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you love. I don't care what color, yeah, I don't care. So, um, and I'm, I'm saying that as a footnote just because I, I want to get on with it. Um, so yesterday I was watching this and I started crying. I mean, I cried through half of it and it's gonna make me cry now. I bought into that bullshit narrative of, of left, right, whatever. I bought into it and mm -hmm. I wasted so much emotion and I'm glad I was there because now I'm here and I know what there looks like. Mm -hmm. And I think that, and, and I see all, of, not all, but I see a lot of my polarities coming together mm -hmm. And Beautiful. my dualities are starting to not be dual, I guess. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I have, I've started a letter to her and it just, I watched her and she was just so freaking amazing. And I called Charles, I'm like, Michelle Obama is amazing. And he, and he just died laughing. He's like, honey. And I said, I, I, I mean, for example, when she goes to the queen and she hugs her she's a hugger. Well, I'm a hugger. You come to my house, I'm going to hug you. And, and it just, and so I identify with that, but she broke protocol and she was so awkward and the queen kind of hugged her back. I mean, so, you know, she wasn't the only hugger there and, the, but, oh, it made all this news. And I'm thinking that's my girl. I mean, somebody yeah. that would go in and not be so intimidated and that you you're going to do the wrong thing and, and be so brilliant. And, and at the same time, I and don't heart know, centered and heart centered. And then I was, I was looking at that and, and Charles and I often talk about how, diet and, and anyway, this whole other story, but how when we eat well, we stay well and we mm -hmm. don't really need to go to the doctor as much. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole thing she was trying to do is say, Hey, let's educate kids and parents. And, you know, let's talk about food and diet. And when a third of our youth are overweight, there's something going on. And, and I just remember the right, I remember the response to that at the time and people going, ah, we're a nanny state and how dare you. And I thought, really? How dare I talk about our kids being healthy? You know, I'm not telling them to go, you know, drink castor oil every day. And, and it just, <laughs> and so I, I, I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed mm. of myself then, mm. but it was so beautiful just watching it and learning about this woman. And I do remember some of the things the far right were saying, and it was, it was, they were heinous. It mm -hmm. was heinous. Mm. And, and I never bought into that, you know, like I never, bought into that stuff, but it's like, I missed out on something beautiful. And I feel like I'm looking at things for the first time, you know, I'm looking at things. I didn't realize I was still in my parents' bubble or not, mm. or, or my, I don't know if it necessarily my parents, but my, whatever that is that almost that programming. Mm -hmm. And now it's just like, 
oh my gosh, what an amazing person, you know? And, and, and anyway, so it's, I love that because there's so much opportunity to love outside of the bubble that you talk about. We all have our bubbles, you know, we all have that. And I think there's this really strong, I think it's an, you know, and, and not to say that ego is bad, but again, like the, the inte- intellect, there's a, there's a place for uh, the ego. And when we feel rigidly dug in about something, you know, and we ha- and it has to be a certain way and we're missing, like, how, how do we hate, how do we learn to hate people that we know nothing about? You know, how do so, we, how does that happen? My default is love. That's yeah. my default. Yeah. And so for me and that, this is exactly, thank you. Cause you're, this is full circle because I was feeling in and I adore my father and we're very close and he's an incredible man and I understand him and I understand why he thinks what, how I I understand how he got there. And I'm, but I was listening to a couple of people and I was feeling into the way I felt about it. And it was just like, oh my gosh, for me to sustain this is really hard. And, and for me, such a good point. But I, I, I brought in the, the cabal and the this mm. and the lizard people. I mean, it's like, there was just no end to my crazy ass. And, and it was just, and it just got deeper and deeper and deeper. And it's like, but it was a thousand percent fear base, mm-hmm. thousand percent. And so yeah. for me to, to hold on to not even investigating a family because I, 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 I don't know, I, I was afraid that the story that they were putting forth was not true. Not, mm-hmm. not the Obamas. I'm saying the Democrat, the Republicans, the, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. government, and mm-hmm. there was so much behind it. I mean, this is, we're just talking conspiracy stuff. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, and I think, I think when you wake up, you do kind of go down a conspiracy. I mean, I think it's, it's very hard it's, to sidestep that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you question your reality. You, re- you question everything you've been told. And there's a lot of compelling believe. stuff. Yeah, there is, but you have to believe some really crazy shit. I mean, yeah. I, I look back on that and I'm, I'm not weighing in on whether it's true or it's not. I just know that when my foot is in that world, mm-hmm. I'm very afraid. I'm very angry. Mm-hmm. I, I trust no one. Mm-hmm. Everybody's been brainwashed, of course, except me. Um, mm-hmm. And so I can't, that's usually I, a red flag, right? I can't that's sustain. Usually, that's a red flag. I think when, when you think that, you know, everything and everybody else has been snowed, that's usually a sign that maybe some deeper examination um, is needed because I just believe that everybody's per everybody get everybody's perception is right for them. Right. And I really don't buy that the majority of human beings are bad. I think that we all default love the huge vast majority of us do and um and also i mean if you if you are not afraid of dying i know that sounds like incredibly um i I mean some people i i don't i don't mean to to uh like i know death is is a big topic but if if you just live and trust that all is well here and when we're not here um we can just sort of default on a much less intense default where it's like, how do I, how do I enjoy my freaking life? How do I have more friends? How do I have, a, you know, better relationships and the life that I really want? Everybody's going to die. Not one of us gets out of here. Apparently one person did, but he died. <laughs> he had to die too. And so nobody gets out of here alive. And yeah. so it's, I think what we fear is how we do it. And I know yeah. I don't fear my death, but I fear the death of my children or my husband. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure. You know, I don't want to go through that pain. So, right. So, well, and, and, so, and, and, and why, what do we do? What do we, what, what is the, the takeaway from that of, of knowing that we have fear about losing our loved ones? What's well, we takeaway? try to control, we, we, I don't know. We, we, we tr- let's, let's love them. Let's love them. Mm, yeah. Let's have as much love while they're here because we're all, we all are temporary and we don't know. I mean, my dad died when he was 60, you know, that's in and, 10 years for me, sister. Yeah. It's just 11 and a half for me. And my, I, I acted, I, I went through like almost a whole year of acting very weird. Cause my husband's 61 and holy crap. Was I, I, I didn't even realize that I was acting completely out of my a triggered state. Cause it was the same age that my dad 
was when he died. And I was like, you need to take better care of yourself. Like, what do you think? You know, like, I don't think you're, you, you know, I was angry at him. Like I was carrying my anger for losing my dad and projecting it at my husband. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just like, and luckily he's so easy going, just like, okay. <laughs> you know, like what's, what's in her? It. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what though, but look at how, okay. So I think it's so fascinating that we walk with a foot in these two worlds. And you and I know, we've seen it. We've seen stuff, we know 100% without a doubt that there's life after this. Yet, on this side of the veil, we're human and we have to experience it. Instead of going, woohoo, you've gone home, badass. Oh man, I have to turn off the light and sweep up the floor, great, thanks. <laughs> Instead, we're, we're broken almost. I mean, we're devastated. Mm -hmm. that our loved one is gone. Mm -hmm. And that's the human side. And it's almost like we can't, like we almost have to go through it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I wonder about that. And I, you know, have you heard this term death doula? I'm actually looking into getting trained. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. I would love, I, I, I know that, I know that this is a, a phase of my work that I'll be moving into. So it's so I'd funny be, that you say that. Yeah. I, I mean, it's such a, first of all, it's such a, a, a cool term because it's exactly <laughs> what I feel like it is. It's, it's like a re it's a, it's a birthing into, it's the reverse of a birth of a baby, mm -hmm. you know, and, and how to do that. That feels like something I was born intuitively knowing. And I think some of us are just meant to do that work. And obviously if you're signing up for that kind of a, a training, then you are too. And, and, and I meet these people who are like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so, I think it's so integral to where we're headed as a species. Well, and I think we came from that place, like the, the more um, hunter gatherer societies appreciate, like we didn't live as long and we died more often. I love those glasses. Oh, they're not very good. They, oh, tell me they are good, honey. No, cause you can't look over them. Oh, they're, yeah, but they're so cool. <laughs> Look, I have a tan now. Thank you. Okay. But to be able to use your background, anthropology, um, archaeology. Yeah. Archaeology. <laughs> hypnosis, life between lives, life Energy before life. Yeah. I mean, in that, that would be phenomenal. Yeah. That would really, I, I'll send you something because what triggered me, I, I I'll send you what I watched that triggered me. This woman yeah, was phenomenal. Yeah. It, was a TED, it was a TED talk, but yeah. I was just like, <gasps> anyway. Yeah, so, I'd love to do that. Cause I, I feel like I've, I've already done that once before. And I feel like, I've, yeah. And it was, I was the one in the family that really felt like I was, I was totally being guided. Um, but it would be cool to see like how it's done well. <laughs> I was, you know, in, I was 30 and I was like, Okay, dad, let's talk about this. You're dying, you know. <laughs> Did you know? <laughs> he was like, it kind of, yeah, it's kind of a buzzkill. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, but, you know, let we're going to wrap it up for today, but we need to um, do this so much more frequently. And I think you're doing your show, up, uh, you're up with your show again. I'm up with my show again. And we need to just be. I need to have you on too, man. Totally. Let's do it. I'm, I'm way down. I, and I love, I miss Tiffany. I haven't talked to her in forever. Yeah. Yeah. You guys need to connect. Yeah. yeah let's let's do that. that. Okay. Totally. Yeah, well, so, so what do you want my people to know as we close from you? It's a little, a little morsel, carried morsels. Carries morsels. <laughs> well, I, I and would... not in a, in a kinky way. Oh, that could be fun too. <laughs> um, your heart knows, your heart knows. And I think to find that space where- Look, that space. Feel that space. But mm -hmm. you know that space, a song, a, a flower, a friend, that space where it's hello sunshine instead of goodbye motherfucker. You know I mean? They're, they're like these different, <laughs> well, but seriously, some days you're one, some days you're the next, where it's almost like when you're fresh, first in love mm -hmm. and how, somebody can kick your dog and you're like, that's okay. You know, as opposed to just getting mad at everything. And when you're in that space, 
miracles happen. And, and it's dropping from here, trying to figure it out, trying to navigate, trying to control, trying to control outcomes. And you drop into your heart and you truly almost Feel. put, put it on a shelf. Like you put your problem on a shelf for a while, let yourself put it down for a while. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what answers you get and what resolution you get. Totally. So that would be probably mine. Cause I think I you can apply it. it to a lot of different things. I love it. Yeah. yeah. So Thank you, Carrie. And well, thank you, Nora. Yeah, I love you. And I love you on the show. Um, so get in touch with Carrie and watch her show, Joyride Show. Um, and is that- is, Alice Eats the Apple, Joyride, I don't know. Yeah, at Alice Eats the Apple. I need to rename it. I, I think on Facebook, I'd switched it to Alice and I need to put it back. And I mean, it's Alice Eats the Apple, a Joyride Show, but I don't worry about Alice Eats the Apple. I, I need you, to switch. Can people find you just doing Joyride Show? I think so. I know you, you can find the website. So mm -hmm. joyrideshow.com or joyrideshowstudios.com. But it's um, but if you're on Facebook, we're Joyride Show, Metaphysical Moms. Metaphysical um, Moms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah you can catch out her too. <laughs> yeah, I've been on yeah, so I've been on the show. Yeah. So you know, please do comment and share what you're getting out of these conversations. Cause we really, oh, yeah. we really love hearing from you. Ask your questions. These are really long form conversations that will continue into the future. And um, so do subscribe, do um, click on notifications and, and join us next time. Next week, I'm going to have somebody who, was uh who is a former rockette and she's a pretty <sighs> awesome person so check dynamic out. i bet yeah very dynamic and um her name is gina and she's going to be on the show next week so tune in and until next time love you all Mwah. Mwah. love you Carrie. Bye, guys. love you bye. too honey bye guys <laughs>